Hello, hello, lovely people. How are you? We are back, the Limitless Landscapers podcast. And today I'm talking about something that you might find extremely boring or extremely exciting, depending on whatever floats your boat. So we're talking about three key things that are very simple that you need in your landscaping or design business. And I'll be going through why, how, and everything else in between in the podcast. So let's go to the show. As the co-founders of the Landscaper Circle, we help you get more money, time, and freedom to become limitless through our experiences as fellow landscapers and our tried and tested methods. If you want help with your marketing, managing, or growing your business, you've definitely come to the right place. If you're a landscaper, garden designer, or supplier to the industry, then hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello guys, how are you? It's a lovely wet day again in beautiful wet and rainy and grey England. How are you? Things are exciting here. We're still in the process of creating our new and exciting thing in Aura Landscapes and I'm beginning to change TLC. So if you're a TLC member or one of my one-to-one clients, then you'll know a bit more than everybody else. So I'll be saving that for another podcast. But today I'm talking about three simple things that make a huge difference to your business. Now, these three things are not out of the box. They're not exciting. In my opinion, they're very, very boring. They're things that I hate doing, but do them anyway. But it came to me when I've been talking to clients within TLC and my coaching clientele. And essentially, some people still don't do these things in their business. And for me, I thought it was just something everybody had, everybody was doing. But that is not often the case. And I think that's interesting to me because sometimes I think, oh, everyone knows this stuff. And actually not everyone knows this stuff because let's be honest, we all trained as landscapers or garden designers or horticulturists or gardeners. And we didn't really think too much about the building blocks of a business and setting it up for success. So yeah, it was very, very, very interesting to me. And I thought it's a perfect podcast because what I like to do, I I haven't got a plan for my podcast going forward. And I, I don't intend to, unless I've got guests on or we've got some big campaigns or launches But essentially, I tend to like to talk off the cuff about things that are actually happening in the world of landscaping and particularly things that keep cropping up with people that I'm talking to. So whether that's members, whether that's people that I meet at awards or industry events, either way, these are things that are being spoken about in the industry. And I think it's important that I raise them to you guys. So if you are listening, I hope you're going to enjoy this episode. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about, and and everything is very simple, so please don't think this is going to blow your mind. It may well do, it may not, but these are things that people have still not got in their businesses, and it's things that we didn't have at the beginning, so I'm not judging. It's just something, it's a reminder, and if you also, it's a reminder here that you may already have them, but you're not using them, so I will go through all of that as we go. But essentially, the first thing that I'm going to remind you of that you may or may not have is an inquiry log. And again, very simple, not going to blow your mind. But essentially, I had a conversation with a client who did not have an inquiry log, they logged it all on a whiteboard, which is fantastic. But then once that client's gone, they get wiped off the whiteboard and never seen again so it's then really hard to go back and see what's been working and what hasn't now the inquiry log simple 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 there's a template in the tlc topic section if you are a member so you can go there and download it and just fill it in very simple excel sheet and it's just a document where you keep track of every single inquiry and i have to highlight that every single inquiry not just the good inquiries not just the site visits not just the ones that you sell to you are logging every single inquiry Now, this is important because if you look back on an old podcast of mine, I can't remember what the name is. I'm going to have to have a look and put it in the show notes. But I did an entire podcast about monitoring my inquiry log to see whether the dips people were finding in the industry were real or not. And the only way I could do that was compare and contrast previous years to each other. So 
the same period of the same year of a different year. So looking at a period of time and seeing how it compared to the year before, the year before pre-COVID, during COVID, and obviously now post-COVID. And it was really interesting because actually we hadn't changed inquiries, as in we, apart from during COVID where the inquiry levels went through the roof, if I look back on the years prior, we were at a similar level, but it felt that we were lacking in leads. And that is purely because we were used to the boom that we all saw during COVID. But if I didn't have that inquiry log, I could have got into that negative mindset, really low energy, lack minded energy, and really started thinking, oh, we've got no leads, everything's bad, really doom and gloom. When actually, because I had the inquiry log and because I could look back and see what this period was against that period and that year versus this year, et cetera, et cetera, I could make well-informed judgments on my business. And the judgment was, it's the same. It just feels really different because we've experienced that in, you know, enormous peak that we all did, which was fantastic, but it was unexpected. So this is just one way the inquiry log is really valuable in your business. The other valuable way it helps you in your business is that you can log where people have come from. Now, you do have to ask the question. Often, Mike will go out, chat to clients on site, and he forgets to ask. So therefore, then it comes down to me when I'm contacting them via email or follow up where I can just, can I just ask where you got us from? Because then you can monitor what's actually bringing in the leads. I've had numerous conversations over the last 13 years now where I will discuss with landscapers where their leads come from and they will just throw out their word of mouth or, yeah, my vans get me X amount of leads. However, when they drill down into the actual figures, which are usually found within your inquiry log, it can tell a very different story. Similarly, you can target different areas. So if you see that you're getting X amount of clients from an area local to you versus another area, I would concentrate on targeting the area you're getting loads from because obviously you're working well in that area you're known in that area and the people are buying from you in that area so you can really target your marketing so that's the second benefit of your inquiry log not just to log names and numbers but to actually monitor and then really get specific and targeting your marketing to make sure your marketing's working for you instead of throwing money at throwing money at the wall The third reason why your inquiry log is really good for you is it can tell your conversion rate. So it can tell you how good you are at selling, how good you are at talking to people on the phone, and also whether you are really rubbish at it and you need work. Over in TLC, we do have an entire topic dedicated to sales. I'm going to do another one because it needs updating. But sales is my love. I love selling. And essentially, you have to be good at selling in order to grow a business. You know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, your main area of focus should be selling. So you need to monitor your conversion rates because if your conversion rates are really low, then you need to really look at what's going wrong. It may be simple tweaks. Maybe you're not asking for the sale. Maybe you're not going back to do your face-to-face selling and you're doing it online, which is notoriously harder. Either way, you can then you can then improve your sales processes. It might not even be that your sales process is the problem. It might be the communication is poor. How many times have you thought, I must get back to that client and never got back round to it? So by putting a good process in where you contact them after X amount of time or within X amount of time can really improve the, you know, the buy, the sales conversion or the site visit you know, inquiry to site visit ratio as well. So you can really look at that and tweak different things in your business to make it work better for you. Because obviously we want you to get more sales. We want you to get more profit. We want to grow your business. It's lovely when everyone has successful businesses, but if you don't know where you're lacking, you can't improve it. So it's really important on that inquiry log, it will give you an idea. And the last reason why an inquiry log is amazing, such a simple yet highly effective tool is the fact that you can then utilize it to contact people afterwards. So there's your basic open quotes that we're all contacting in order to get booked in. So that's the one that means, you know, is a sale or a not sale. Then you've got people that potentially didn't go with you because of any reason, but maybe you've got a new service coming out. So maybe you now offer maintenance or cleaning, or I don't know, whatever it might be. So you can recontact those clients and say, yes, we didn't build your garden, but do you need someone to maintain it? Yes, we didn't 
build your garden, but do you need some planting, et cetera, et cetera. So there's ways of upselling or really building a database of customers and clients and ex-clients and lost clients that you can contact with new services, keep in contact with via newsletters so that they know you're there and potentially just uplift your sales in that respect. So the inquiry log, I think, is a really simple yet effective tool for every business. And so many of us don't do it. And you do have to keep on top of it. You do have to update it. And you do have to keep a note of, of every single inquiry, no matter how poor or how great they are. You need to keep these logs in order to get most effective and most like clear data, because it's all about data. We need the facts, not the fiction. We need clear hard facts rather than what you think is happening because that's not always the way. The second really simple thing that I'm going to mention and I've probably mentioned in numerous podcasts, numerous webinars, definitely on coaching sessions, definitely on group coaching is having a cash flow forecast. I don't know how I survived in business without one of these and going forward, I would never not have one of these in any business that I did. But People put, get put off by them. In fact, one client I spoke to this week was very put off because they felt it was going to be really hard and difficult to do. Yeah, I sent him a template. And if you're a TLC member or a coaching client of mine, you can get that template. Just contact me or log into the topics area. And essentially, you just fill it in. And it's really simple. In fact, the business topic in TLC has a guided video of me explaining how I do it in my business and filling it in with you. So essentially you fill it in. Again, it's a simple spreadsheet. It's really a simple spreadsheet, but essentially you are mapping ingoings, outgoings and seeing if you are in the red, the black, or if you are in the best place ever where you're making a shit load of money. So essentially it's all real time as well. So you are meant to update your cash flow forecast according to your actual bank. So essentially at any period of time, I could go on there today and update what's gone in and what's come in, what's gone out and how much I'm going to be having at the end of the month. And then I know how much I'm going into next month up or down and so on and so forth. And there are multiple reasons why this is good. One, you have a much better handle of your business and the cash that is flowing in and out because cash always flows. It goes in and out. You're not meant to keep hold of it. You're meant to then know where to reinvest so essentially the cash flow forecast can allow you to make decisions on growing teams on buying vehicles buying god i can't think of a word like diggers and stuff can you afford it yes or no plug the figures into your cash flow you know it will help you make decisions on do you need to increase your prices because your break even point has gone up where you've spent some more money or costs have gone up of course do you need to increase your prices? It will also tell you how much you need to get in each month just to break even and to make profit. It will tell you how much profit you're making. It will give you an estimate of what VAT you're going to be paying so you're not completely reliant on the accountant telling you a week before it's due. It can just make your life so much easier in business. And I didn't have one for many years. Um, and it was only when I worked with a coach and mentor, my very first coach and mentor, a lovely guy that I found from a networking group. He helped me set up this. And this was the only reason I managed to get a yard because I did not know if I could afford it or not because I didn't have a cash flow forecast. I had no idea what was really going on. I just knew that every three months I had a management report from my accountant. But by then you're three months down the line. And, you know, if you're in trouble, you're already in it. If you're doing really well, you don't know about it. So until then. So essentially, this is a way to have a real time look at your business to get a handle on costs. It also, when you're doing it regularly, and I try and do it every week, allows you to then start looking at your costs and thinking, well, can I, do I need that? Or what benefit is this bringing me? Or should I spend more money here? maybe on marketing should I look at a different fuel card that might save me a bit of money should I look at a new insurance policy that will save me a bit of money is there a way I can reduce the labor slightly in order to make more money? I don't know there's lots of things but these are all questions that can get answered through a cash flow forecast and the most beneficial way of using the cash flow forecast for me is I copy and paste the cash flow template that I have into another tab and I call it the if tab. Now, 
And then I run different scenarios. So if I had an extra team, how does it impact on the cash flow? Well, we'd get another job a month, for instance, and we'd have another cost of this. And you can plug in all the figures and it will tell you if it's a good idea or not, or whether you're going to need investment to do so. That's another key. If you're utilizing your cash flow forecast and doing all these if scenarios, you'll know if you're going to need investment as well. And we all need investment time to time. It's, it's a business that's heavily reliant on when you build a team, everything that comes with it, you need more tools, more vans, more advertising and more marketing. So essentially, it's a cost heavy business. And landscaping in particular and essentially we need to know if you're going to get the return on investment because return on investment is really important and that's another episode you could go and check out if you really want to find out more about return on investment and how important that is but essentially cash flow is the lifeblood of business and if you haven't got one you need one i can happily provide you with a template if you haven't just let me know but essentially cash flow is key um the third and final thing which kind of ties in really well with cash flow is your costing sheets or your budget i used to get concerned people would say oh what's the budget da, da, da. and i would be like well i said i don't budget what do you mean budget but actually all it means in your costing sheets is you're costing out the cost of a job versus the price you've said to the customer and then seeing if if it's within there then you can set budgets according to how much you want to spend on marketing, how much you did spend on marketing and what the result was. This is the kind of key of budgeting. You set budgets, then you see what you actually spent compared to that budget. And then you look at the results. The results is the key because if it's generating great results, do it again. If it's not, don't do it, essentially. That's mainly you know what I use budgets, budgeting for. But your cost and job costing sheets are really key as well because you need to see if you're you're making money on each job. And if you're not, it will highlight where you're going wrong in your pricing. So are you pricing labor too high? Are you not pricing enough, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, a job costing sheet is just a glorified spreadsheet and it has the list of costs, the numbers, and then it will have what you have said you're going to charge to a client and it will give you the profit. And then what you do is you type in your actual number as you go through the job. So as the receipts come in, as you know how many labor days you've had, you can type that all in and see if it matched it. If it doesn't match it, if it's under, fantastic, you've made more money. If it's over, then you really need to go back and look at why that's over. And that might be a conversation with the build team. It might be a conversation with the designer. Maybe the design went wrong and you just need to tweak it and then go back and do it, you know check that this is not going to happen on another job. But the costings are really key to make sure that you are making money on every job. And if you are not, why not nip it in the bud? Let's move on. So that is essentially all I want to talk to you today about three simple things that you need in your business, how to use them, why they're effective and why they're important. And if you need any help implementing any of those things, get in touch. And most importantly, don't be put off in doing them because they're really key to steady growth. They're key to the success of your landscape and design business. And you'll thank me for it one day, even though they are very boring. So that's it for this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host, and I will be back again next week with some more Limitless Landscapers advice, tips, and goings on. So have a lovely week, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode.